Hey, what's going on guys, Ara here, and welcome back to my F1 2018 mod career mode here, driving as Fernando Alonso in his McLaren Renault here for round number seven today at the Canadian Grand Prix. If you missed last week's episode around Monaco, be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, guys. But Canada, one of my favorite circuits on the track, looking forward to being here. And I think, uh, although we are obviously in a McLaren powered by a Renault, so we are going to maybe lose a tiny bit on the straights compared to the Ferrari and the Mercedes powered cars, I think we should go well here, and you never know around Canada. Definitely a lot of slipstream, a lot of action could happen with the AI cars. But without further ado, let's get into the starting grid. So here's how things stack up then for the start of the 2018 Canadian Grand Prix round number seven of this season. And once again, the man on pole position is Lewis Hamilton, his Mercedes car. And it's another front row lockout for the Mercedes boys, a dominant force in this mod career compared to real life there. One and two for the Silver Arrows. In third place, Sebastian Vettel, the man on the top step of the championship at the moment in third, alongside his former teammate, Daniel Ricciardo, in the first of the Red Bull cars. In the third row is the exact same as last race. Max Verstappen in fifth place, Kimi Reich, in sixth, he'll be disappointed to not be there nearer to his teammate and uh, nearer to the front row. It's been a while for him since the start of, of the career mode. Nico Hulkenberg, ever consistent in seventh place there, and ourselves in eighth place as Fernando Alonso. Decent qualifying for us with the Renault guys, seeing a little bit of a bump and an upgrade for this race. So I think we've done well to be there ahead of Roman Grosjean. Then Carlos signs for the first time in a while, gets into the top 10 by the skin of his teeth in 10th place there. Hopefully, he'll be hoping for his sake to be going a lot better this time round. Kevin Magnussen then, P11, the first runners to choose their own tyres for this Grand Prix. And then Sergio Perez, surprisingly, up in 12th place, obviously using his Mercedes engine to good use down that straight to pull himself ahead of my teammate, Stoffel van Dorn, who lines himself in unlucky number 13 with Espen Ocon in P14. Then Charles Leclerc does a fantastic job to be in P15 ahead of Pierre Gasly then. And the two Toro Rosso boys going down the pecking order somewhat with their Honda engine not performing too well and getting a bit of a downgrade from the last few episodes. Brendan Hartley in P17 then with Sergei Sorokin doing well in that Williams to be P18 on the second last row of the grid. And then the last row is Marcus Eriksson and Lance Stroll in P20 in that final slot for the 2018 Canadian Grand Prix starting grid. So before we get into this thing, usual look at the race strategy and seeing what we're going to do. And usually Canada is quite a sim uh, simple, straightforward uh, case here with a one stop uh, from the ultra soft tyres to either the super softs or the soft tyres. But you can see there clearly a bit of rain on the way into to maybe full wets just by the last lap of the Grand Prix, uh, potentially. So I'm going to swap that round to super softs. And normally that wouldn't be enough to get to the end of this Grand Prix. I'd really be cooking those tyres by the end. But you can clearly see the rain's going to come down sooner uh, before the end of the Grand Prix. So we can get a Away with a one stop on dries from ultras to supers and then on to the inters there so gonna kind of cheat the one stop essentially but here we go then to five red lights to the Canadian Grand Prix round number seven is 2018 season let's see how we do far lights are out and we're underway it's a pretty poor start actually compared to Nika Holcomb there who gets a lightning one he's gonna go down the inside of Kimi Raikkonen we're going to turn one double lock up from us as we don't want to slam into the back of Raikkonen but at the moment pretty much I've got nowhere to go and uh, pretty much I can't gain any places here so we're just sitting here pretty in P8 and uh, just watching the action ahead as Holkenberg tried to look at Raikkonen. Doesn't work out. Similarly enough as Stappen looks to be uh, he trying to get on the back of Vettel but doesn't work out for him and meanwhile Ricardo has actually jumped Vettel and he's up into P3 but for now it's a 1-2 Mercedes and I think that's Valtteri Bottas getting away from Lewis Hamilton there. So uh, Hamilton off pole position once again. Not doing great off the line and Bottas the Finn is, is the one leading the way. And meanwhile now Vert Sainz is down the inside actually. Only just noticed that right now. Carlos Sainz is making an overtake attempt and the upgraded Renault is uh, uh, pulling to good use for the Spaniard there. Spaniard v Spaniard obviously as we're driving as Fernando Alonso. We're down the inside in the hairpin trying to now re-overtake him for what will be P8 but uh, Sainz has got it. He's got the better traction around the outside and fair play. Caught napping I was down that main straight, uh, that back straight towards that high speed chicane and Sainz has got us and we're just about uh, staying ahead of both Haskars of Roman Grosjean and Kevin Madison. You can see both the Hasses in our, in our mirrors and so Sainz, really good uh, opportunistic move from him and both Renaults now in P7 and P8 looking pretty damn good and obviously they need to be. So far this season they've gotten very unlucky so they need a good result this race and with Toro Rosso being a little bit down in the order and Renault being up here they should be looking to maybe swap the, uh, their positions in the constructors. Now we can see though on lap four we're trying to ruin Sainz's party. He locks up into that first into that second chicane on the lap. He blocks us a little bit, so unable to make anything work and almost had to 
uh, yeah, put on the brake. Yeah, I had to put on the brakes big time actually to kind of stop myself slamming to the back of him. And you can see Grosjean is right up, uh, right up my gearbox, so we need to watch out for that. But uh, meanwhile, in the lead still is Valtteri Bottas from Hamilton, Ricardo Vettel. Then, and you can see here this is Max Verstappen now under pressure from Kimi Raikkonen and around the outside. The Finn will go and squeeze out the Dutchman, and Verstappen looks like he's got major issues because he's so slow off that corner. And I think he might have some sort of damage or mechanical issues because Hulkenberg now is down his inside. He's already made the pass before the hairpin there, and Verstappen is really struggling now in this Grand Prix. And so soon myself and Sainz might be on the back of him there. Hulkenberg just about finishing off the pass then on the exit of the hairpin. As we go down the straight, we're up into Rich Mix to try and close up on uh, Sainz, open up the DRS, but Sainz you can see right up ahead, pulled to right hand side, and uh, Verstappen looking pretty damn defenseless here. Nice and easy under braking from us as we know they're going to tangle a little bit. We don't go down the inside and they effectively do a little undercut move on both uh, Verstappen and Carlos Sainz and we're up into P7 nice and neatly there. So, you know, just took it patient. I knew exactly what I was doing in that case. I knew Verstappen and Sainz were going to go side by side because it didn't look like Sainz had the legs to make the pass just before the chicane. And so just, uh, was you know, patient was on our side. Patience, patience was virtue. And down the inside for two moves in one. And so now we can try and chase after Hulkenberg, but we're already up into P7. But uh, Hulkenberg's looking even better into P6. So I said Renault will be looking to maybe try and re-overtake Toro Rosso in the championship. If Hulkenberg finishes like this, he, he'll definitely be doing that but now we move on to lap nine a few laps later we are closing up now in Hulkenberg finally with DRS open just not enough on this lap as we go on to lap 10 to close up to make a move into turn one but we have a little look in his mirrors just to make it just to make him uh, aware that we are there behind him looking at an overtake suit and soon might be right now as we're closing up now on the back straight into this last chicane we're going to try to go down the inside but Hulkenberg uh, does well under braking a little bit hop over the curb we're going to have to fight back and do the switch back again on Hulkenberg like we did on the Sapping inside and it works out for us a little bit argy bargy there with Nico but he really did put up a good fight but uh, ultimately the bunny hop he did across that final uh, little uh, sleeping policeman in the chicane did not help him meanwhile now later on in the Grand Prix as we go through the laps basically now these are the two Mercedes cars they've made their first pit stop already and they find themselves fighting each other in traffic meanwhile still in the lead this Grand Prix then is Ricardo for maybe not too long as Vettel's down his inside so this is a battle for first place between the two former Red Bull teammates Vettel on the right hand side there's he squeezed towards the wall. Ricardo now on the outside of turn one and Raikkonen is closing up as well so it could uh, soon be a three-way scrap here but Ricardo is still putting up a good fight for P1 in this Grand Prix. It looks like the Ferrari cars and the Red Bulls or at least the, the Red Bull of Dan and Ricardo are going to try a bit of a longer strategy compared to the Mercedes guys and Vettel has got it though so Vettel up into the lead of the Canadian Grand Prix and it's a, a Ferrari sandwich for Ricardo then in P2 Raikkonen in P3 and we might soon see Raikkonen fight Ricardo but yeah the two Mercedes cars have come in a lot earlier compared to those guys and so they're going to have to deal with traffic and maybe they're trying a two stop rather than a one stop to the rest of us and now we've got Nico Hulkenberg so so unlucky he's going to be out this Grand Prix with an engine failure there and he's going to be off uh, on the exit of turn one such a shame as I said Renault have gotten so unlucky and looks like that bad luck is continuing for now at least with Nico Hulkenberg but now look at this a fight now that I said was probably going to happen between Raikkonen and Ricardo so the Ferraris they may have not been amazing in qualifying but they're coming good in the race now as Raikkonen tries to move around the outside doesn't work out this time around can you see the yellow flags were out for Nico Hulkenberg so you can't obviously overtake under yellows but now on the next lap Raikkonen is going to try it again with DRS wide open on the outside of the last corner. It's going to be very tight and close and Ricardo just about keeps it out of the wall of champions and it stays head by a nose in P2 and again he finds himself on the outside into turn one but this time now Raikkonen has a much better line into turn one compared to Vettel so I think he might have this done earlier. No, not quite. Ricardo is really putting up a very good fight this afternoon. Again, he fights hard into the uh, first chicane but just like with Sebastian Vettel, it's no use and Raikkonen will get that and he'll make it a 1-2 for uh, the Ferrari guys there but Ricardo now down to P3 so with that moving on later then into the Grand Prix back to us on lap 14 we're going to box in this lap now so we've gone so long on these ultra soft tyres up to lap 14 and you can see we've stretched it probably three laps longer than my default strategy was that I set uh, uh, when we started this Grand Prix so I've done myself a favour in terms of when we get to that end of the stint when the rain will uh, theoretically start to come down you never know with this game it might not come down but hopefully it does by the time that rain starts to come down we'll still have pretty decent tire wear on the super soft so we just don't add to the, the matters of a slippery track plus worn tires and so uh, we've done ourselves a favor there because we're nearly about halfway through down at this Grand Prix we now come up on lap 15 and the two hasses might jump us we've had a double lockup and we're on the grass half of our car on the grass and we're down to PE at 10 then 
as both Haskars have overtaken us. Magnuson and Grosjean ahead of us, and we've not done ourselves any favour there. So talking about all that uh, talk about you know saving the tyres, that we, we just didn't do our tyres any favour there with a double lockup, and now we've lost potentially one place there. I think that's Charles Leclerc actually ahead of the two Hasses, and yes, it is because he's now being overtaken down that straight. So Leclerc trying to do his best out there doing his own thing and actually oh dangerously Charles playing with the throttle there just about uh, puts it through uh, the two hasses to come to the pit lane for his first pit stop there and so now we need to chase after Magnus and try and re-overtake him but it actually looked like fair and square Grosjean had us on the undercut so I guess it's kind of a uh, you know balancing out between yes we've gained the tire wear but we also lost the track position we're trying to stretch those ultras out but we will have the better pace and I think generally I'm a bit more uh, confident on, on around this circuit compared to the Haas car so I think we should have this hopefully we're gonna uh, have a look on Magnus and we can down the inside looks like and it's gonna be a little dive and we've just about made it go a little bit deep into that corner and give Magnus a taste of his own medicine and really being very aggressive with him to get that move done and we're off into P6 and so actually that's amazing so in, in, in all of this somehow we've gained quite a bit here so I think the Mercedes guys have been caught out massively with the kind of two stop they're trying and also remember the Stappen's not in play anymore because he had some sort of mechanical issue with the car I don't know if he's rectified that but for now he's not in the top pecking order so already we're having to make an overtake on Grosjean and after we've overtaken him we could uh, be as high as P5 and uh, even more depending on what the Red Bull and Ferrari guys are doing but here we go now for a move on the outside this time on the second half of the afternoon on lap 18 lock up on the right tire very very bad action we got off circuit and so Groshan comes back at him so it's not such a simple move then so a uh, little simple mistake into turn one and grosjean has got the car back on us so we have to try and be a bit patient and re-overtake him later on in this lap through the first chicane closing back up into the second chicane can we try and make a pop down the inside we'll go for it as the crowd will have a good look at this we're side by side Grosjean though keeps his car parked quite well and so we do a switchback move essentially on the line a little bit of argy bargy with him on the left front there but we're going to hopefully get that move done eventually up into P5 but Grosjean's going to fight back and he's on the outside to the inside for the next part of the chicane and he's got it and so the Frenchman's put up a fantastic fight here and this is becoming an absolute ding dong battle between McLaren v Haas here this afternoon in the hairpin it's all very close still but we'll get DRS now we'll have the rich mix we'll have the slipstream so surely this is going to be the move finally done on the left hand side DRS open there rich mix flying and it's going to be an easy pass finally and we can probably breathe and take a breather now and we can just look ahead to try and use the track position and the clean uh, track we got ahead of us to try and pull away but we're up into P5 we're, we're pretty damn high in this Grand Prix actually so looking good for now I believe at the moment the cars ahead of us are Bottas the two Ferraris and Dan Ricciardo then in P4 you can see so uh, we'll see how things pan out with Bottas I don't know he might have started to convert his uh, two stop to a one stop but we're looking at a replay now Pierre Gasly across the line for a new lap and it's a big big blowout on his left uh, left rear tyre and he's spun it around 316 into the first corner what a bit of action there from uh, the Frenchman in the Toro Rosso Honda and he's trying trying to ride his car through on the remaining wheels he has but unlike Fernando Alonso at Baku he does not have the skill to do it and he's slammed into the wall and he's out of the Grand Prix then but here we go now looking uh, through the Grand Prix Bottas has made his pit stop now so it's Vettel in the lead it's a 1-2 for Ferrari there uh, not sorry not a 1-2 it's uh, Ricardo in second then Raikkonen in third place just ahead of Valtteri Bottas then who's made his pit stop so Bottas has uh, done a two stop but he's had enough pace to actually do the two stop and uh, uh, come out ahead of us so fair play to him meanwhile though Hamilton that's a different story Hamilton actually surprisingly has not had enough pace to do a two stop and be out ahead of me you can see on the top left he's actually behind us now and uh, well he was behind us because now we've come in on lap 24 for a pit stop and it will be onto the intermediates because you can clearly see the spray is coming down the spray is coming off those front tires and the rain droplets are coming down so as I said you know we can basically bodge job and kind of hack the one stop in a way and not even have to use the soft tires this afternoon because now we're onto a set of inters although you can see a bit of a shaky exit there as the track or at least the pit exit is not quite wet enough for the inters so tip to going through the exit of that uh, pit exit and we're on to P8 now so you know not even out of the top 10 after we made that pit stop and you can see we're now closing up to Roman Grosjean uh, by the time we get to the back straights now we can see I think that was Sebastian Vettel disqualified from the Canadian Grand Prix I think that message was as Grosjean's in now the virtual safety guards out so could that be because of Vettel I don't know what on earth Sebastian Vettel's done but I think he's just been disqualified at the Canadian Grand Prix now the lead 
of the Canadian Grand Prix. So, I don't know what that means. Does that mean Ricardo's potentially leading? Raikkonen is the car ahead of us at the moment on track. And Van Dorn just comes out behind us. We're very, very aggressive. We uh, go a little bit wide, or uh, uh, very wide, and try and cut him off a little bit. So that was a little bit harsh from my teammate, but I wanted to make sure I stayed ahead of him on track as the virtual safety guard was still out, remember, as he could not overtake us if we remain ahead of him. So we're up into P4 now. Van Dorn P5. And oh my god. This is why Sebastian Vettel has been disqualified for the Canadian. He's driving backwards down the pit exit. That is, um, I haven't seen scenes like that since like last year in our mod career mode uh, in the Ferrari at Brazil. Oh my god. And then he has a bit of a flying mo wheelie moment there. Sebastian Vettel driving down the pit exit, then reversing back down the pit exit and blocking the track. And that is why he's clearly been disqualified. Um... Okay, a absolute scenes then, the Canadian Grand Prix. And so now we move on to lap 35, then the last lap of the Grand Prix. Not too much happening in our race. We're in P4 still, Van Dorn still P5, but it's a double retirement from Roman Grosjean and Sergio Perez there to make it only 15 runners in this Canadian Grand Prix. Bit of a bloodbath here at the Canadian Grand Prix. And that's Roman Grosjean, unfortunately, at the Grand Prix. He was just out, uh, behind in around P7, I think. So unfortunate for him and also for Sergio Perez, who was in the point as well. So both them out of the Grand Prix, but that will elevate a few people like Lewis Hamilton, like uh, Max Verstappen, I think, and also, more importantly, I think Charles Leclerc may be up there in the points. We'll have to see at the end of this Grand Prix at the race results, but here we go, into the hairpin now, up into P, uh, well, still in P4, Van Dorn P5, I think uh, just ahead of Max Verstappen, but Valtteri Bottas is the one that wins the Canadian Grand Prix. Quite surprisingly, he's made that two-stop work. Somehow, he's got ahead of Raikkonen and Ricardo. I, uh, we couldn't really see how that happened, but I think it may have happened in the pit stops. I think Ricardo and Raikkonen went one, uh, one lap too long uh, when it was raining. I think that's how Bottas got into the lead. I think uh, Raikkonen and Ricardo got caught up on slick tires on a wet track. So it's uh, the Finn that wins it there, and the Mercedes is going to be very, very happy. And I think uh, Valtteri Bottas might even take the lead of the championship now because of this. Uh, but he wins it from Ricardo, from Raikkonen, uh, and ourselves in P4, doing a pretty damn good job there around uh, the long, uh, you know, the Canadian Grand Prix. You know, you need a lot of straight line speed. And so it could have been a tough old time for us, especially at the start of this Grand Prix. The two runners were looking pretty damn good. But we come through, and also Van Dorn has finally pulled up his socks and also come through for a spectacular tackle P5, but there you go, the Finn winning the Canadian Grand Prix, and that will see him through into the lead of the championship, I think, but let's look at the full race results then. So away from that top five, Carlos Sainz is the one in P6. So in the end, actually, Carlos Sainz has finally got a bit of luck in this uh, in this in this uh, season, and he's done a decent job to get eight points at least for the Renault team. So that will help them get ahead of Toro. So but Verstappen still managed P7. But look at that, Charles Leclerc P9, two points for Sabah Alfa Romeo. Absolutely fantastic job there for the youngster in his debut rookie season there. And Esmond Ocon still comes through for some points for Force India there. So fair play to him. And Magnussen is in P8. So that's the full top. 10 results then. So for the championship then, with that win, Bottas thrusts himself into the lead of the championship by only four points though. So it's very, very close to the top there between Bottas and Vettel. Uh, Vettel down to uh, P2 now with 106 points from his last, uh, from the last Grand Prix. Uh, uh, Lewis Hamilton also does not score points there. So he's still on 95 in third place there. M meanwhile, with Van Dorn overtaking Grosjean in the championship to be up into P8. So a bit of a checkerboard there with Red Bull McLaren, Red Bull McLaren there from P5 down to P8. And so, and so it's a two Hass is lining a stern in P9, P10, and Perez still in that P11 with 10 points to his name. But we move on to the Constructors' Championships. Mercedes extend their lead in the Constructors from Ferrari. They're 205 points to 191. Same kind of pecking order apart from the Renaults finally overtake Force India. So like I said, uh, the Renaults wanting to try and get back into this championship. So my bad. I kept on referring to them overtaking Torosso. They were actually trying to overtake Force India in, in the championship, but they have done that. So they're into P6. Force India down to P7. And then Alfa Romeo Sauber up into P9 ahead of Williams there with two measly points, but two pretty important points, at least at this point in the championship from Charles Leclerc. But guys, a pretty damn entertaining Canadian Grand Prix. Lots of action kicking off, not just with me, but also the AI. So if you haven't enjoyed that, smash that like button. Can we try and aim for over 1,000 likes, guys? That'd be awesome. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this episode. If you are new around here, do get subscribed for weekly full-on content. I've been over. Hope you enjoyed today. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.